people in country. So if there's questions that are kind of intractable that we're not getting clarity on from doing the back and forth thing, then our, our partners there can go and visit them and, you know, really understand the situation. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm so glad we got to Okay, shoot for the moon, Nicole and Chris. It's okay. time to shine. So you could just introduce yourself? Oh, I'm Chris Miller. I'm a second semester MPA student at Monterey Institute. I'm from Kentucky. The greatest state in the union. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, how do you think your participation in class today helped Firelight? Well, hopefully we helped to give them a different perspective on some of the challenges that they're facing. Um, hopefully we... I, I heard from some of your fundraising people too that they enjoyed this because they hadn't seen this side of the you know the program side of firelight foundation a lot so i think those are both ways that we're helping firelight through our participation awesome um let's see was there anything that you can you think you learned today that stood out to you most um i think i learned a lot more about the um how the partnership works between Firelight and the CBOs. It was still kind of murky to me after the first two classes, but I think today helped clear that up and um, understand kind of some of the leverage points that Firelight can use to address some of the challenges. Yeah. Um, Today's topic was organizational sustainability. Can you talk specifically <laughs> about some aspects of Firelight's model that you think either contribute to their organizational sustainability or some areas where you think they could Firelight's improve. organizational sustainability yeah. or their um, CBOs, their partner CBOs? The model, the seven year. Contributes to the CBOs. Sustainability? Yeah, yeah the way that yeah. Just the structure in general. Um, I think it helps that from the beginning they are um, kind of given that exit strategy um, so that they know that it's a finite time. Um, I think that's a good thing. I think that um, I think the second phase where they start to talk about uh, being kind of self-sustaining, the income generating activities is good. I would almost wish that that came earlier, but I know that sometimes that's not logistically possible. But um, so that they never had that dip in their own funding as they got donor funding. Right. It'd be nice to see a, at least a level playing field all the way through not increased. Did that answer your question? Yeah, I was planning on it. Um, yeah, I think the structure of this class has helped um, both us, the students, and Firelight um, because, once again, it gives them a different perspective. It gives them some of the academia behind the practical experience that they're dealing with the day-to-day, -day, and it gives us the practical experience that we'll be dealing with with the theories and things that we always deal with. And it is better to deal with an organization that's going through these struggles and these challenges right now as opposed to reading documents and just working on a basically historical case. Maybe the last question. From the group work, it seemed like at times today the groups were struggling to wrap their heads around some of the um, concepts of issues and partners and who, how to make sure that everyone was involved and in what way they played a part. So can you talk about how your group understood those issues and how you worked through some just that activity in general, that group one. Which the, the class? main one, <laughs> the main seven person group where you had to talk about issues and actors. Right. Just so that we can try and make it specific to today's Um content. I think that maybe some of the confusion came be because Can you uh, restate the question a little bit too, sorry. Uh I don't know if I could restate the question. <laughs> like, Just say, like, in our group work our group, today. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in our group work today, some <laughs> of the challenges, I think, arose from the fact that um, some of the methods that Alfredo uses, um, people hadn't used before. I had his organizational sustainability class last year, so it wasn't as hard. But when you're given a really finite amount of time, like, 
15 minutes to got, try to wrap your head around like, okay, we need these issues and then we need to group these issues by actors and then the power relationships between those actors and the culture underlying, I mean, it's a lot. It is, it's a complex situation, I mean, that, but that's what we're dealing with. So I think it was more like a time issue than people not getting what we were trying to get to. But overall, was it meaningful? Yeah, definitely. I think this was one of the better classes as opposed to some previous ones where it's more of a, a lecture, um, where this lets us get right into the nitty gritty of trying to figure out how it works in this context. Cool, okay, thank you. Thanks. Just reframing, I guess. Shoot for the moon. Ready? Yeah. Michelle, today the students uh, were working on answering some of these questions separately from Firelight. What were some of the uh, things that you learned from what the two groups are? <laughs> um, so it seems like in the, in the two smaller groups that were mainly students, we kind of dance around these, these core central questions um, that like revolving around organizational sustainability and then when Firelight presented their questions they really they were really centered and they um, summarized the things that we were trying to get at in our groups and I think some of that comes from just obviously working in the organization they understand the context better um, and they could really see what the challenges were for themselves in ways that we couldn't identify separately from them. So knowing that what do you think Knowing that students are bringing a more academic set, sense and Firelight is bringing um, like a more program focus. Or contextual. Yeah, contextual focus. How do you think those two things can be synthesized and what makes it a useful partnership? Right. I mean, I think one challenge with this class is that although it's not a case study and we have actual people that we're interacting with, they're still presenting it in this theoretical way. Like, we don't know what it looks like on the ground. We, have, we can't speak to beneficiaries. Like, we don't know what their um, reporting and monitoring and evaluation looks like, what the actual data looks like. Um, and so even though we're talking with real life people, we, don't, we still don't have a good feel of what it looks like on the ground, which is really challenging. Are there benefits to the good things too? Outside perspective. Um, yeah. Does it help? Yeah. Maybe. Wait, does, does like how does help? miss without that information? How can miss help entirely? So uh, right. So ir irrespective of whether we know exactly what it looks like on the ground, still there are theoretical things that I think we can add to the organization. Um, and just having divergent thinkers, we have several very divergent <laughs> thinkers in the class, which I think contribute um, a lot to the discussion and hopefully ask questions, pose questions to Firelight in a way that will stimulate further thinking on their part. So what did you, what will you take away from today's class about organizational sustainability? Um, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> organizational sustainability. Um, or, I mean, one thing that, like through the anecdotes that, how do you pronounce her name? Al Oh, Ali? 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 I, I guess How Ali. How do you spell it? A I L I? A I L I? Um, Ali? 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 <laughs> Ali? Um, was was speaking about like it's kind of it seems like it's kind of a mixed bag. Even even with an exit strategy, it seems like some organizations are better able to um, successfully create income generating activities, while others aren't because of things that are happening on the ground that maybe they can't control. Um, and it doesn't seem like Firelight has the answers necessarily, but the, the communities of practice and like bringing people together to, to solve sustainability challenges seems, seems promising. Um, and I guess what I've learned, um, particularly from today's, like even the best laid plans, like they have this two, three, two model or this one, two, one model. Um, even the best laid, laid plans don't always come, come to fruition, but they seem to be, um, like not a punitive organization and like they continue to work with those organizations that are struggling with sustainability which is really 